All right, hey guys, Todd Sachs of Sachs Realty, and welcome to this episode of Turn It Upside Down, where we uh, talk about inspiration, dedication, and motivation, and we talk about things that's good for you and your business. And today, Melissa and I are honored to have a very special guest. Her name is Christina Daves, and Christina is an award-winning inventor. She's a serial entrepreneur. Um, she's a best-selling author of two books. And really, she teaches clients how to get free PR. And guys, in today's situation, that's really important, free. So um, Christina is identified as the DIY uh, PR strategist. Um, in her current book, which I'm reading right now, uh, the guide, the DIY guide to free publicity, she has over 100, she has 147 tips of things that you can do. Um, and really, uh, she talks about the start of her invention, which is known as Heal in Style, and she'll talk a little bit about that. Today, you're going to learn about some top tips of things that you can do to get free PR. Um, so Christina's story started at a very young age. So she graduated college, and um, she was going to move to Germany. So she had studied German, and um, her father became ill and ended up dying uh, you know, with cancer. And I think it was 12 days before that, that her father passed, she lost her grandmother too. And we've all had, you know, major events that have happened in our life that, has, that maybe has changed the course, but her sure did change. Um, so really, um, she started a, a medical boot fashion company and, and she could tell the story better, but she was going to New York City and was looking for accessories because she had broken her foot and couldn't find anything. And really, um, I, I think the story goes, she, she had had a couple businesses prior to that, um, you know, like we all do. You just did everything, put their whole life and savings and mortgage, uh, mortgage the house and everything to try and get this business to go. And was really had exhausted just about everything financially. She didn't have a choice but to learn how to get her business into the media, into the public to tell her story. And she didn't have money to do it, so she had to do it free. So, Christina, thank you so much for joining Melissa and I and, uh, you know, kind of take it from there. Thank you. That was Thank you for caring and reading that. And I, that was a great introduction. Uh, yeah, you know, and a lot of us are in that boat right now. You do what you have to do. I mean, and, and I've been telling people this since this craziness started. You can hide under a rock or you can lead. And, and the people who lead, who lean in, who are helpful and valuable. This is not a time to gouge your customers. I don't mean anything like that, but this is your time to provide value, to provide content. And when we get out of all this, those are the people who are going to shine. Yeah. And you know, uh, we're all sitting, many of us now are sitting at home, home offices, or, you know, really some type of isolation. And now is really the time to start be think to start thinking about things that you can really do to, tell your story. So, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk about your book. Okay. I hear you. So the one you just launched in, in, uh, in January. January so, yeah. you know, one of the, yeah, there it is. Yep. Yeah, so one of the first things that you talk about in, in tip one, I believe is your why. So for everybody that's watching, they, they, you know, I always say there was a reason why you started doing what you're doing right now. And sometimes we lose the passion or, you know, things don't work out the way that we'd like them to. So what is it that you can tell people right now about their why? Right. You have to figure out why you do what you do. We're, we're really not in business for money. I mean, I'm sure there are some people, but most of us are doing what we love or what, what we were called to do. But you've got to figure that out because that's your story and everything. I mean, Todd, you did such a beautiful you know, version of my story or sharing my story, but that's why I'm here today. You know, all these things happened and I have been at rock bottom. I, we did lose almost everything. And it, it's helpful because there are other people 
like that out there that maybe they're a year behind where I was when all of this happened. And to see somebody and think, oh, I can get through this. Maybe somebody started, I know obviously you have a real estate company. One of my former clients had just started in real estate and learned how to do this stuff. And he had his license for two weeks, got an article in the Washington Post. He sold $24 million his first year. And his story was he wanted, he was a manager at Bed Bath & Beyond, has three daughters and, and wanted to give them a better life. And he knew he could do that with real estate. So, you know, and he took what he learned there that became his story. And that was that article that was published. So that why is so important. So what do you tell people? I mean, as far as, you know, getting that, how did he get that article in the post? He asked. <laughs> I, have, I have a system that works. It's you want a newsworthy story idea. You want to create a great hook, which is the subject line. And you have to find the right journalists. So he had an idea, which was brilliant. He had learned from his days at Bed Bath & Beyond. He was brilliant at Facebook ads. So and he knew that he could sell houses that way too. So he pitched, he found the editor of the Washington Post real estate section and his hook, which was fabulous. That was at the time of all the, the Russian hacking and Facebook. And he said, if the Russians, and this isn't exact, but something like, if the Russians can hack our election, you should be able to sell your house the same way. And she read it and it was all about, and it was something new, selling homes by Facebook ads. But think about it, you go to a listing appointment and, and your agent says, oh, we're gonna sell your home online and you're 60, 70 years old, you're gonna say, no, you're not, like, no way. And then you show them the article from the Washington Post. They're like, oh, the Post wrote about this. And he didn't pay for that. He did not pay for that. No, he pitched a story idea, yep. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was watching some of your YouTube interviews today on saying, and you had mentioned multiple times how important it is to ask. And with that, with that comes the six degrees of separation with it's not who you know, but who that person knows yes. as well. Yeah. And that's with anything. I, I'm doing a big thing right now. I said to Todd about for the class of 2020, because um, we have seniors and I'm every person I talk to, who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? And I've got the Today Show on board and I've got some huge influencers on board. So don't, don't put, you know, diminish the power of your network. And that's how you can get in front of media and the right people and the, and, you know, and clients and customers too. Yeah, I can understand that completely, Christina. I have a senior myself and it's um, definitely top of mind for her on what she's going to be able to do as far as graduation activities. So yeah, I think it's very important right now. Yeah. And again, it's pulling the network, pulling the connections and, and not being afraid to ask. It, that is my biggest thing is what is the worst anyone's going to say? No, or I'm sorry, I can't help you. And what's the best that can happen? Yeah. So if you have a business right now, I mean, you should be thinking about, you know, how do you get that free? So you talk about advertising versus PR. Right. Advertising you pay for. And advertising is your message. And, and we all advertise from Facebook ads, print ads, but, but publicity is free. It's what they call earned media. So if you can pitch the media a good creative story idea, and I don't, I don't, I think we've had 20 in the last two weeks from people that I'm working with, you know, right now, all they're talking about is COVID-19. So how do you fit into that? depending on what your business is. Are you a small business that was forced to shut down? That's a newsworthy story idea. Did you, are you a restaurant you had to go to curbside pickup? Are you a real estate agent that now, you know, do I go, do I do open houses? That's going to look really bad. You know, how do I do this virtually? Just this whole shift of our economy has, has left, I mean, unlimited stories that the media needs to cover and they don't want to just cover the disease and what's going on. They need those peripheral stories. Yeah. What's happening? How do you move forward? How do you still do business, but maybe on a limited basis for the people that actually need your service? Right. So, and that's great point. So what are some of the things, I mean, obviously 
this is for any business operator out there because especially now they're being affected. But, you know, let's talk a little bit more about those storylines. So for a real estate agent, it may be how they went virtual. Um, and you had given examples of the restaurant that went curbside, um, you know, or, you know, any other company, they know who they are and what their story is and the ways that they've been able to at least try and, and, and get through this. Then what do they do with that? So they have these ideas or a story to tell. What should they do next? And I'll use a perfect example because it just happened. I have a former client, um, used to own an auto repair company, retired for a while. Now he has a bunch of craftsman auto dealers. And they kept calling me and I, I was crazy busy and we missed each other a couple times on calls and I finally got through and she learned what I taught her. She's like, Christina, I finally did it myself. So what they are doing is they're raising money to, to have restaurants send food to the, to the healthcare workers in the hospitals. And Fox News picked it up and they drove around with him when he went from restaurant to restaurant, picking up food and then dropping it off at the hospitals. And it was all with his company name. Again, not trying to get publicity for the company, but of course the company gets that benefit of it. So there's so many different, and all she did is they put the story together and they sent it into the newsroom. So it's, it's just condensing that story and having a good story idea that's relevant now, which right now everything is related to coronavirus. But there are so many. There's feel-good stories. There's, there's good business stories. There's pivot stories. There's so many things that, that we can share. It's your opportunity to get that media coverage. Yeah, and we're saying, too, to our agents, you know, now isn't the time to be salesy. You know, the, now's the time to dive into the care, just like you had mentioned. The, the, it goes back to your why. You know, you had said that money isn't what we work for. If you're really successful, money's the byproduct right. of doing something really well and, you know, having a good story and, you know, and getting it out there. There's a lot of people that have good stories that they don't know how to get it out there. And, you know, that's what we're talking about now. So, when they package it up, so they have a good story and they reach out to the, to the, the media, um, how, what do they, is there, is this available online? Are they able to see, you know, who they should contact? I mean, how would they go about that? Google is an amazing resource. Um, you know, of course, in better times, you know, people would hire me, I would do all that for them, but you can do it. You know, it's, it's all on Google. Just take some research. Look for newsrooms. And, and nobody's in the newsrooms right now. So I always used to say follow up with a phone call. You probably aren't going to get anybody on the phone. You're probably going to have to send that email maybe twice and see what happens because they are getting inundated. That's why that email has to be so powerful and so strong that when they see it, it's a, wow, this is great. How do you do that, Christina? How do you have an email constructed that it actually sticks out and that you pay attention to it. That's that subject line, the hook. It's really important. You can look at magazine covers. If you think about who buy, when do you buy a magazine? In the grocery store aisle, impulse purchase. You're buying based on the hooks that you see on the cover of the magazine. So those are the kinds of things, you know, leave it open-ended if you can, you know, if, you know, if coronavirus ends in three months, housing prices will dot, dot, dot. You know, you could do something like that, that they'll, oh, that makes them want to open it. Make it good. Don't just say, here's a story idea. They're going to get a thousand of those. If you can give them some meat in that hook, that's going to make them say, oh my gosh, I've got to see what she's talking about. I've got to read that. And then you want it to be short and sweet. I always say, think of your own email box. When you get an email that's this long, what do you do? You flag it. I'll look at it later. Nine times out of 10, I don't look at it. And I've interviewed journalists who said, oh, these PR firms make it easy for me. Delete, delete, delete. Just give them some meat. Give them a sentence or two, some bullets, some statistics, and how they can reach you for more. Don't write the story for them. Don't write the whole thing out and, and do your homework. 
If you have a dream media outlet, see how they cover stories. If you hand it to them on a silver platter, exactly how they cover them, it's a lot harder for them to say no. Interesting. So you say um, in your book, you talk about a picture being a thousand words. Um, should they put any type of picture in the email? Uh, and absolutely. Right now, we're in a really strange media time. Um, I just filmed a segment for my local ABC in my kitchen in my family room. <laughs> you know, all my lights that are usually here in my studio are upstairs uh, because they asked me to do a segment and I don't have their camera people. I don't have their lighting people. So, you know, making do and adjusting. So pictures, and I actually sent him some pictures to put in the segment as well, because, you know, like I said, I was filming, I was filming with my phone. Uh, so doing things like that. Yeah. Picture. Sometimes you could do a picture of what you're doing and send it. Newspapers love that. And right now they can't send their photographers out. So making their jobs easier just really makes you more valuable to the media. So you're saying that with them not sending the photographers out, they'll use your picture that you have. They could. Absolutely. Yeah. You sure. have to sign a release, but sure. That they can't they they can't send a lot of people out to do this stuff. So they're relying on us to give them information. Yeah, interesting. Um so everybody, I mean, obviously there's no and so it doesn't matter whether it's a, um, it doesn't have to be the news. It can be the newspaper. It can be the local magazines, the publications. I mean, right. I mean, anything Absolutely. that, I mean, everybody Podcasts. knows what podcast podcast like we're this doing right, right now. now is huge. I was just talking to a colleague of mine who's a big social media person and we're speakers. That's how we get our, you know, we're paid speakers and then we get our clients from speaking on the stage. Well, that's gone for who knows how long. So it's a, it's a shift to podcasts, digital, virtual summits. Uh, and that's what everybody has to do. We've got to pivot and you've got to pivot quickly. You know, real estate, you've got to pivot to this online showings. And, and I've worked with clients for years on Facebook lives, doing stuff, teasing people, and, and they would get contracts based on their Facebook lives. So those people are already kind of ahead of the game, but We've got to dive in. You've got to give people, educate them, content right now. Put your content out there so people can find you. They're not going to find you at a networking event. There's no chamber events. There's nothing. You've got to get information out to your people. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and one of the things you say too is get people talking about you. So, um, I mean, we have said in many meetings, uh, we talk about, you know, we, we, um, we even refer to the maven, which is a old Jewish word uh, that uh, is sort of like the know-it-all or the, you know, aficionado. Uh, and, um, you know, we try and say, if you get your message into a certain person, they have the propensity to share or just talk about things. So, um, you know, you'd recommend giving them you know, anyone really, these newsworthy type of stories of what's going on right now, how they're making it, what they do, and, and what they're doing for their communities. And uh, is there any tips on how to find out who those mavens are that will share or, you know, really, you know, read something and... Right, influencers. Is, influencers. Yeah, again, Google. Look who's in, you know, if you need a local influencer... It's not hard to find. You can look at Twitter, look at LinkedIn, see who who's out there, talk to people you know. Um, but the best thing you can do is just keep putting information out there. Right now, we were talking about the real estate space. It's changing daily. You know, the, the money's drying up. This is happening. These programs are gone. This is, but I'm still hearing homes are selling like crazy. And I told you there's, I think, three signs in my neighborhood saying coming soon. So educating your sellers, educating your buyers, because they're, they're nervous too. Some people have to move. Maybe they have a new job transfer. They, they don't have a choice. So they're going to work with the people who are 
give, making them feel better, who are giving them information when they, and they're going to Google it. They're going to check you out. I promise you that before you even get that listing appointment, they're going to put your name into Google. So that's where the media stuff comes in too. You really want to stand out with your content and that you're positioned as an expert. Yeah. So it's modifying the plan, but still having the value. Yes. It's all about value. Everything yeah. you do should be value. Your content, your media stories. And that's why I said right now, it's not, you. I don't want you to go after media so that you, for benefit. I want you to go after media for value. Yeah. It will come back to you, I promise. But right now people want, I want information. I'm, I'm Googling stuff. I'm doing things. So what kind of value can you provide anyone in your space you know, if you're a restaurant who's going to make it, you've done some things in the past. How can you help the guy who just opened three months ago? What did you do? What is something you did back then that might help them now to stay in business? That's the kind of stuff. That's a great point. So be a business coach to even your competitors that you aren't otherwise a business coach to. So, I mean, and they'll you know, sort of make yourself that authority or that industry you know, leader and other people will see that. That's a, that's a fantastic tip. So um, you had said, uh, and, I, and I think I'm right when I say this, but you'll definitely know the answer. When you have something written about you from a media source, you know, and PR, and someone is Googling you, that will have a tendency to be high on the, the search, correct? Is that Absolutely. I, we're riding somebody's SEO coattails. You know, if you put my name into Google, and I joke, it used to be if you put Christina Daves in, Christina Aguilera came up because she owned all the Google juice on Christina. But now I'm like 14 pages of Google and it's media after me. It's Forbes, it's Entrepreneur, it's Steve Harvey. It's all these amazing things. Um, WJLA, I do a ton with them. That's my local ABC station. And I actually have a newer website and I had put my WJLA stuff on that website. It's more of a personal website versus my PR for anyone. And somebody looked at my SEO and they were like, holy cow, you only have a hundred, you know, ties back to your website, but you're ranked so high because of the authority that I get because of them. So when you're in Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, you get all their authority with Google and it just pushes you right up to the top. So uh, one of the things that you uh, speak about in your book is how fast can this go? And, um, you know, I years back and I still read it. I, I think I'm reading it again for like my 10th time. Uh, it's not it's a book called it's not the big that eat the small. It's the fast that eat the slow. And, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of things that are happening. And you know, like you said, things are changing. A lot of people are coming into the space that maybe they've been thinking about it. They're being pushed to technologies that they, you know, wanted to do and, and they're, and for whatever reason they haven't, what can you say about speed and trying to, you know, emphasize the important importance that they need to do this right now? Right now. It can go so fast. Uh, the story that I told you about the Washington post, I think he pitched that on, it was right around Thanksgiving. So let's say November 22nd, November 28th, somewhere around there, before or after. The story ran December 4th. I have countless people who've done it in less than seven days, more that have done it in less than 30 days. Uh, I, if you do it right, and usually you're going to send the email and you hear right back, like, I love this. This is great. Or if you don't hear back, you know, depending on what it was. Uh, but for most people, you know, 30 days, three months, it's not a long time. Some things take longer. My thing on WJLA took me five months to get, but I didn't give up. I kept trying and then I prepared, which is super important. And I've been back every month for two and a half years. So this is, you just have to, you want to be valuable. Um, give them that good story. Give them that good hook. Don't give them a story that everybody else is giving them right now. What's go, go back a step and give them something really good and interesting that their audience will love. So when you send these, um, 
emails, what is their, you know, sort of process? You say that they get back to you right away. Are they very reactive or will that reporter or that um, outlet go on your Facebook or your Instagram 100%. to see? Okay. There's yeah. no question. They are not going to put you, they're not going to use you if you don't check out. They've got yeah. to see, they're going to put your name into Google. I want everyone to do this. Take, open a private tab and put your name into Google and see what comes up because that's what a journalist is going to see. Okay. Make sure, and I'm a huge proponent of this, that your website and your social media, even if you're only on one platform, you don't have to be on every platform, but make sure it's good. It's really good and it, it reflects the person that you are. That's uh, important. And your clients and your customers are going to do the same thing. You have a split second to grab their attention. That's it. So if you're preparing and you, you want to take advantage of getting you know, free PR, which is, sounds like it's very obtainable, you just need to stay on it, be consistent. Um, make sure before you get started, maybe you're doing some postings that are about what it is that you're working yeah. on so that they can see that consistency across the platforms that, you know, you're not just putting out something to get a free article written about you or, you know, a, right. a free news spot, that it is something that they can go, oh, wow, this person really is living what it is that they're saying that they're doing um, that is worth telling people about. Would you, when you send out an email and they don't respond, do you just do it again to the same outlet? I mean, is yeah. So the, the normal process is I do the pitch. Two days later, I do a follow-up call. And when I leave the message, I say, oh, and I'm going to resend the email so it gets to the top of your email box. I understand you're busy. You get a lot of you know story ideas. Now we've got to tweak that a little bit. So I might just send it again in two, two days and say, just wanted to pop this up to the top of your inbox. Uh, the one thing from all the journalists that I've interviewed they don't care if you send them pitch after pitch after pitch as long as it's different. Don't send the same pitch idea to the same person over and over and over again. Um, the other thing they'll do is they'll save it sometimes. If, they, if you have a really good story idea, you have to fit into their puzzle a little bit too. So they'll put it in a file and then something comes up and they'll say, oh yeah, Todd, he sent that story in and then they'll reach out to you. And that's actually happened to me a couple times. Yeah, so that's a good point. Don't send the same storyline because you can't assume that they didn't see it. You have right. to assume that they did they see it and they weren't interested in that story necessarily or they tabled it. So give right. them something new. Exactly. And Great that way point. you're staying front of mind with them too. Great when you point. constantly send it in, and it's like my contact at the Today Show. When I did my thing for the class of 2020, she emailed me back two minutes later. She's got a son in eighth grade. He's not going to get all – I mean, she gets it. She understands what I'm saying. She said, anything we can do to help. So I've built a relationship with her. by And I don't always hear back from her, but this was something they were like, yeah, we can definitely help you with. So one of the things that you say in your book, Christina, is – you all come back now. So I guess that's what you're referring to is when they, when they use you once and things go well, they'll use you again. Exactly. And that's so important. And I coach my clients on this. When they get those, especially the television spots, you have three to five minutes. You want to be able to use that. So I coach them so they're an unbelievable guest and they're able to get their sound bites in there. So it's beneficial to them to be able to have that on their website or send it to potential clients. So it's a win-win for everyone. You're a great guest. And once you're a great guest, and there's a section in my book from my producer at Channel 7 who gave some tips. And that's what he said. Come here and give us, great, give us a great segment and you go in the Rolodex. We'll call you again. Yeah. So let's talk about David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the media loves a story like that. Um, unfortunately, right now, I think we're all kind of David's you know, trying. Uh, coronavirus is our Goliath. Um, but no, the media does like those, you know, the little guy stories, the rags to riches stories, the I took on the big guy. Uh, one of my clients is a compass agent. And when Redfin last year 
said they weren't going to represent buyers anymore. She was furious. She's like, well, cause she's a big buyer's agent. She's like, well, they can't do that. That's wrong. That's I said, Pat, that's your story. Like let, let's talk real quick. Five minutes. We wrote up a story. She got a full page article on the front page of the Washington post all about being a buyer's agent. So if you're looking that's for a, a big deal, agent, huge, who do you think is they're going to hire? Pat, who's all over the front page of the Washington Post, or somebody else who knocks on the door? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and what we really have to realize is, you know, we try to do so many things to get business. And this is something that is, uh, is very practical. You've proven it again and again and again. <clears throat> it worked for you. Um, it's the reason, you know, quite honestly, you attribute this a hundred percent, you know, your hard work, but as far as, you know, the PR getting your word out there, um, you, you turned it into an eight figure, you know, business essentially, right. Eight figures. With people I've worked sales. with. Yep. And, and the, the thing here is we have to really keep into perspective. We don't need 150 clients in a year in, in our business, the real estate business. So we need a certain amount of business and if we focus, I mean, you get a full page ad on the Washington Post. You can literally make your year with that one ad. So, you know, that you didn't pay for. I mean, that, you know, basically article. you couldn't. Yeah, article, it's a, not article. an ad. Uh, not an but ad, imagine yes, if thank you. you paid for a full page ad in the Washington Post. What is that? 10, 20,000? I don't even know yeah. off the top of my head. And. And like you said, you're telling your story versus someone else telling your story that has a lot more credibility when, you know, it goes a lot farther in the eyes of the, the public, the consumer. Um, trends, any, you talk about different trends, you know, were there PR trends that we should be looking for right now? You're big on social media. You still believe in Facebook? Uh, I believe that everyone should be on a platform. Uh, for real estate people, service people, insurance agents, anything like that, Facebook is really important because you're a referral business. So your friends and family are the ones who are going to refer you out. Now, you don't want to do business on your personal page. And everybody says, oh, Christina, I have so many more friends than I do followers. So you want to do your posts on your business page and share them occasionally to your personal page. Um, but and you, we all have friends who are real estate agents who just post listing, listing, listing. I don't want to see that. I want to see what your kids are doing. I, you have to remember the platform. Like what is Facebook? So you really want to do your business on your business side. Um, Instagram is huge right now. Uh, but it really depends on your age group of people that you're working with. So think about that. But I, I always tell my clients, do one platform and do it really, really well. Because if you're doing it well, people are engaging with you and those are the people who are going to refer you business. Yeah, good, good point. Melissa, you want to jump in there? Yeah, I do. I was just going to say, um, you, when you were saying about your, um, your friend Pat, I just thought it was also something to think of is that if she feels that way, there are going to be other people that feel the same way that she does as well. So there are a lot of people that are going to be like, you know what, I can relate to this because this is exactly how I feel and it's on paper. So I just think that that's a really another good connection piece where it's someone's feelings and emotions and that you can connect on a personal level. Absolutely. And here's something else to think about. If you see something, if you're reading, you know, we have the internet now, you're reading a story from, let's say a real estate topic in San Diego, and it relates here in Washington, DC, pitch the same story. I have my clients on coasts. I'm feeding them both the exact same story because, and it works. And they're not competing with each other. They're not competing for the space in this paper or that paper. Uh, so look and see when you talked about trends, what's going on across the country and bring it home. What's newsworthy somewhere else could be newsworthy here. They might not know about it. So actually look, uh, when you're looking on Google, look for your industry and see yeah. what people are covering. And there's actually a, a tab at the top you know, where you can do all or news or video when you're on Google, you know, yeah. so maybe put in that search something about your business that relates to it and then hit news and see what pops up. 
And the other thing you can do is Google alerts. Set Google alerts for your industry. Look at it once a day. You don't have to look at it all the time. Just put it in a separate folder and pop in and see, see what's going on in your industry. See what Great comes point. In there. Yeah, that's a really good uh, tip there. So um, what about the paid PR sites? So I know there's, you know, a couple of them out there. You're going, ah, so it's not the same. So when you see these, you know, different PR where you can, you know, write an article or create your own article and then you pay a price and they no. If you want to pay $800 for a press release, call me first. Because okay. I can help you. <laughs> right. Trust me okay. on this. No, it, okay. it used to be a coveted thing. People who put out press releases and it was – you know, a small amount of media that would see it and it, it would get read. And I've interviewed journalists. You can look on my YouTube channel. They're the, and I'm not going to say the press release is dead, but the press release as we knew it before is dead. Now you have hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of journalists that, and they're not going to see it. And so they, you put out this press release, you pay $800, it goes up on these sites, and this infuriates me. When, it, when the whole press release goes up and you get the report and it says, oh, it was on the back end of ABC in New Orleans or this and that, you are not allowed to say, I was seen on ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. You better be able to link to it and show me that you were on television. Uh, it's my big pet peeve, and there are a lot of companies that will charge you to do that, and it's, it's not – True, you're not telling the truth. It's a press release you sent out, you paid to, it's almost like an ad. So then you, you get put an ad in the Washington Post and you say, as seen in the Washington Post? That's not no. legit. So you don't spend your money on that. I have one client who once a year, I have to write her press releases for because she's a woman owned government contractor and she has to get it out when she wins certain contracts to a big so just, she has to prove that she sent it out to a lot of people. She's the only person in all my years that we've ever done this for. Uh, and there's a reason she has to do it. So don't learn how to do this yourself. Make it spend 10 minutes a day on your own personal PR. Teach someone in your office how to do it. It's not complicated. Once you know the system and it works again and again and again. Yeah. And then once you make those connections too, it becomes easier each yep. time. Yeah. Yep. And remember journalists move around. So when you build those relationships, one of my first articles ever was, if anyone remembers examiner.com, it's like one of the I'm first sure. blogs. And many years later, the gal who interviewed me was at Forbes. And she reached out to me and she said, I always loved your story. I pitched it to my editor. We want to do a story for you in Forbes. So, you know, one of the things, and that reminds me, and, and uh, we'll get ready to wrap up here. Um, and before we, before we go any further, I just want to let everybody know, in the show notes, you'll find all of Christina's information. So, you know, she would love to hear from you. Um, I can't tell you enough. Uh, you know, I'm really enjoying her, her new book. Um, it was very, you know, easy to download onto my Kindle. So, I mean, you guys should, you know, right now you have time to do it. Go ahead and do it. She gives great tips, 147 in this one book I'm reading right now. Um, but anyway, one of the things that you uh, say is help a reporter out. So mm -hmm. just like you had just mentioned, you know, um, when, you know, this particular person went to Forbes, they, she remembered your story. So you actually helped her to maybe fill in some, you know, some space because she knew she could rely on you. So what else can you say with that? Well, you talked about help a reporter out. Everybody should sign up for it, especially now that you're home. There's no excuse not to. You get yeah. three monotonous emails a day. I'm telling you, it's not easy. It's, it's formatted from the 90s. Uh, just like a long list of media queries, mainly from national media outlets. It's how I got on Steve Harvey. It's how I got on Dr. Oz. Uh, another uh, um, article in Forbes, Entrepreneur, Fast Company. It's a great resource. It's worth your time to spend five minutes a day to dig through those. But you have to sign up. It's completely free. And then, and then you'll get the emails and you just click on the link and you respond. Uh, 
And if you want to go to freegiftfromchristina.com, you can throw that in the show notes. I have a PDF guide that shows you how to respond to them and how I was so successful doing it. Awesome. That's great. And I just want to be clear, this is for any business out there. Anybody. Anybody. There, there's really no business that this can't work for. I, right? Am I right? Is there, can you think of any, anybody that this wouldn't apply to? It, it does. And they always say, don't say that. That's why you really should niche, but you have to apply the system to your industry. You've got to know where your story fits in, what kind of media outlet. That's what makes it a little different with every industry. But I've worked with solopreneurs. I had a, a billion dollar company bring me in for two days of training, their entire PR team, just to get a new perspective. And then oh. they, were, they had paid $100,000 to a PR firm and were not happy. And within a week of me being there, they were already getting media coverage. Wow, so that's it's, amazing. It goes the spectrum. Follow the system, the system works. Yeah. So guys, you know, we're going to leave you with one final thought. It's not who you know, it's the people that you know who they know. And just keep in mind that, you know, and with today with the internet, I mean, look, we, we know what the internet is now. I mean, it, you know, social media is flooded right now. You know, everybody, their eyes are on their phones. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Get yourself some free PR uh, start thinking about things that are very newsworthy and what you're doing and how your industry has been turned upside down. And, uh, you know, with this COVID-19 uh, pandemic that's going on. And, uh, and, and again, these are things that you can do for free. So guys, you know, I can't encourage you enough. Uh, reach out to Christina. Uh, her information is below whatever platform you're watching this on. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to her YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to us, so please subscribe. Hit that bell so that you get alerts on great content like this. And thanks for watching. Sachs Realty, Maryland Broker, number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.